name's Phil Myers. Uh, I'd just like to talk to you about some of the uh, adaptations and uh, different things I've done to alter my, the, the KTM 1290, which you see in front of me here, to suit my riding style and the way I like to ride a bike. Okay, starting from the front of the bike, we'll go over the, the screen, which is an extended screen, fitted by the original owner. Um, it, it works well at deflecting wind flow over the top of your head. Unfortunately, not long after getting delivery of the bike, I was riding backcountry roads where I live and a pheasant flew out of a hedge, hit the screen about here, bounced off the screen onto my right shoulder and then flew off or landed in a hedge somewhere behind me. It's fortunate it hit the screen first because I think if it had hit me, it would have probably quite, well, done some serious damage. Unfortunately, what it did was break the two fixing points on the screen here. These two were okay, but these two points uh, broke out the screen. So to, to fix the screen meant building it all back up again with epoxy resin, which didn't look good because you could see through the screen to where the epoxy glue went. So I've sprayed the inside of the screen with black gloss paint, which I think improves the look of the bike. Um, it doesn't affect forward visibility. And it's, you know, it still works. You can still adjust it up and down. I think it's at its, its highest setting at the moment, which I think works quite well. Moving from the screen, you'll notice that the front mudguard, <coughs> it may look like a carbon fiber mudguard. It isn't a carbon fiber mudguard. It's the standard mudguard that's been hydro dipped with a carbon fiber uh, glossy finish, which I think works really, really well. Um, and unlike a proper carbon fiber, one it's a lot cheaper and it's also got a bit of flex you don't get that much flex with carbon fiber carbon fiber is, is a lot more brittle material yes you're going to save weight weight isn't an issue for me um and it's also got the the added extra of the the extender on the bottom end here which again i think it's a miss of uh, ktm not to fit this extender because if you don't have this extender as everyone will realize you get all the road crud going up onto the front crankcase there and up into where the exhaust exits, exits the front cylinder, which is, it's not really a desirable thing. Moving to the radiator guard, fitted by the previous owner. It's a, an EvaTech radiator guard. Worthwhile addition to have. Uh, you don't want a stone going through your radiator, cost of a radiator as opposed to buying the radiator guard. It's a, it's a no brainer really. The more observant of you will have noticed that it's got the engine bars fitted and as well as that it's also got four led style front driving lights fitted these were wired in by the previous owner who was an auto electrician so it's it's done properly i've got a separate switch on the handlebar so i can switch them on and off and it really does improve the the forward visibility from the bike ergonomics wise i had major issues with the bike initially with uh, vibration coming through the handlebars um, it's a big V-twin motor, as we all know, and unfortunately, I don't know quite why, but I had a lot of issues with the vibration. So as you can see, first thing I tried was fitting these grip puppies either side, these foam handlebar grips. Um, they did help to a degree. It, it also helped because it's, it's made the bar a little bit bigger, um, and I just found that was better for my hands rather than trying to grip a narrow handlebar grip. So that was the first stage. It, it helped, it didn't solve the problem. So I then did a lot of research with regards to the actual, the clamp, which you can see here. This is, um, this is called a Mako 360. Now it's made by a company called XC Gear. The only unfortunate part about this is that this company are based in America. So you've got to pay shipping charges to get in the UK. There's no UK uh, supplier for this particular uh, item. But I think it works really, really well. Basically, it isolates the bar from the rest of the bike. As you can probably see, that there is, there's a polymer gel in either side, which allows movement in the bar. Rotation lends a little bit of rotation, but there's also side to side movement, and that helps dampen any of the vibration coming up from the yoke into the handlebar. And that really did make a difference for me anyway. Some people obviously don't have this issue. Unfortunately, I did. Um, I think this was this was round about the 200 pound mark, which is, it's a lot of money. But if you're contemplating potentially selling the bike because you can't live with it for vibration, it's definitely worth doing. 
and it also lifts the handlebar up by about oh, 50 mil, I think it's lifted it up by, and I've also brought the bars slightly further towards me as well, which also again helped help comfort of the bike. You can see it's fitted with bark buster hand guards. They're a, a worthwhile addition. It keeps the wind flow off your hands on a cold day. I know we've got heated grips on here, but it, they're, they're a worthwhile addition, I feel. The um, Moving back towards the seat, this is a second-hand seat, which I bought. I've still got the original seat. I bought a second-hand seat and had it professionally recovered. It's increased in height by about 50 mil. And also in the seating portion here, there's about a kilogram of a, a gel type polymer material, which just aids comfort. It really did make a difference. I, I think the standard seat, it's a bit of a board to be honest. And, um, people obviously do get on with it as a standard seat. I know people fit the power parts heated seat, which is supposed to be a bit more comfortable, but this for me was a much cheaper and worthwhile option. And also you were able to get things tailored. I've, you know, I've had the, the stitching done in, um, in orange and obviously they did this lovely bit of embroidery on the seat here, which I think just sets it off and makes it a little bit different. And moving on to the next alteration I made, which I think it's, it's harking back to KTM's motocross heritage. The foot pegs, as you're all probably aware, are very similar to the rear passenger foot pegs. They're basically just motocross pegs. There's no padding in them. There's no anti-vibration properties. And again, vibration wise, I was getting a bit of vibes coming through my feet. So basically I've changed the standard foot pegs for these aluminium pegs. I think they're very similar to a BMW style of peg with a rubber insert in them. Okay, the rubber is starting to wear out a little bit where my feet's been, but it, again, it's a much nicer peg, much nicer peg for your feet. You get a bit more grip because if you've got like a hard soled racing boot or similar style of boot with the metal pegs, your feet just slide all over the place on them with these rubber pegs, much nicer, much nicer to ride with. Another worthwhile addition, as you can see, standard side peg, side support stand, sorry. The, the actual foot plate portion for it is far too small. If you put it on firm, on soft ground, it's going to sink in and your bike's going to fall over. This worthwhile addition of increasing the foot peg, foot side stand footprint is a worthwhile thing doing. I think this was something purchased through um, eBay. It wasn't a lot of money. It's just made from undyzed aluminium, but it does the job. Moving on from there, you'll see the bike is a chain oiler fitted. This again was fitted by the previous owner. Um, the merits of them, I'm not 100% convinced. Obviously, you can apply chain oil yourself to the chain with the bike stationary. This thing obviously deposits a small amount of oil, which you can adjust how much it drops on the chain by this little adjusting wheel here. I'm not fully conversant with how it works. It's something to do with vibration. There's a piston inside this assembly which moves very fractionally from the vibration of the bike and then activates the oil onto the chain. The main, the main problem I found with it is obviously, as we know, with the motorcycle chain, you get fling. Oil, anything on the chain gets thrown off. Now, those of you with the orange wheels on the KTM, you'll you'll see that quite soon after riding, because obviously black chain chain oil or any other form of road grit shows up on the orange wheels quite quite quickly. Black wheels I prefer. Obviously, you don't have to spend as much time having to clear them because it doesn't show up the muck as badly. The only other problem I had was that road grit and oil from the chain were getting flung onto the disc now i know that's an issue with a lot of bikes that have got single-sided swinging arms and inboard discs however i was finding that it was making the the, the back brake virtually unusable particularly if you wanted to hold it on a hill before you were setting off at the traffic lights say it just wasn't wasn't working at all no matter how much pressure you put on the on the foot pedal so i had this as you can see, it's, a, it's basically a disc guard. I, um, I made this by using some, card, some cardboard and made a cardboard template until I was happy with the shape of it. And then made a profile that was going to work. Um, and got a friend of mine to profile this out of uh, four millimeter thick stainless steel. I know it doesn't look like stainless steel. That's because I've covered it with some carbon effect 
um, vinyl transfer film just to make it look a little bit, uh, well, it's shiny stainless steel and I wanted it to look like it does at the moment. And this seems to do quite a good job. I'm not getting any pickup of grease or dirt onto the disc itself. The, the pads, I had to change the pads actually in the rear, rear caliper because they were just so impregnated with oil that were picked up off the disc. You'll see I've got a cap here over the, the nut that's holding the rear sprocket on. And there's one which we'll show you later that's on the other side. These were printed by my son. He basically took dimensions of the two nuts. These are just manufactured from orange filament. So they're obviously not painted. And that KTM logo you see there is just embossed in and just filled in with black paint. Um, moving on from there, you'll see that the, the standard OAM rear hugger, again, it's exactly the same as the front. It's the standard item. I just had it hydro dipped with a carbon film. You'll also see there's the four plastic rivets. Now, originally I've had two of them now. I bought the fender extenders, which you can buy. You see them, I think Puig make one and maybe Evotech, I'm not sure, make another one, another version. And they bring the cover of the rear wheel to about here somewhere which I thought was quite a good idea. Stops all the crap from getting thrown up on the underside of the bike. Unfortunately, I've had both of them ripped off. At some point, obviously on a journey, either don't, I don't know it's to do with heat or to do with the suspension settings, but they've obviously come into contact with the rear tire and both of them have been ripped off. Um, it's a bit scary when you come back from a run and realizes that it's, that's happened as it could have potentially damaged the tire. Fortunately, it didn't, and so I've uh, I've just decided to run without one. I'm not going to risk fitting another one. I know you can actually buy a proper full-length carbon fiber hugger, which brings the cover to the hit about where well, my hand is about here somewhere, I think. But I've decided not to bother. I think they're 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 very very expensive. I think they're about two hundred and forty pounds, and I think you still get spray even with that as well. Okay, on this side of the bike, you'll see I'm running a non-standard exhaust can. This again was fitted by the, the previous owner. I don't think there's another one like this anywhere. This was a one-off. He had a friend that was, I think, involved in manufacturing exhausts and his exhaust silences, and this was made for him. also see as we were discussing on the other side of the bike I've had another cap made to cover the huge wheel nut um, I think it looks quite good again just 3d printed there's a possibility if enough of you out there are interested I could potentially get some of these made up and potentially we could we could sell some on um, let me know what you think okay at the rear end of the bike You'll notice it's got, I think it's an Evo Tech tail tidy, it wasn't fitted by me. Previous owner again, changed the back end of the bike, just tucks everything up, tucks the no plate up higher, moves it slightly further underneath the rear brake light cluster. I think it just tidies up the back end of the bike. This is another worthwhile addition. It's, unfortunately, it's the only place I could find to fit it. This is the, the actual, the horn itself. This is the gnarly sound bomb. This is activated by, um, compressed air so you've got to mount the horn in one place and then find another place to mount the actual compressor unit now the only place i could find to mount that which was by me trawling the internet i found a guy that had done a similar mod on this particular bike and he he mounted it in a really good place and i've basically copied where he put it so if we scan round to the front of the bike we can show you where the actual compressor for the denali sound bomb sits it's mounted underneath this major bracket which supports the uh, the front front uh, front screen should I say and clocks I had to fabricate as you can see a stainless steel bracket and if we come round to the other side of the bike you'll see where the electrical connections and the hose for the horn exit the back of the unit okay I'm gonna give you now a quick demonstration of how loud the horn is
makes you notice which you need to be noticed whilst on the road. Okay, I think that's about it in terms of the alterations and additions I've made to my bike. Engine wise, it's completely standard, apart from the addition of a booster plug. Those of you out there might have heard of a booster plug. I had one fitted to a BMW last bike. Basically, it's a module that plugs into the, I think it's the air temperature sensor on the bike. And it tr basically, it tricks the bike into thinking the actual ambient air temperature is a bit colder than it actually is. So it make, basically makes the bike run a little bit richer and it just helps with fueling. I've, I've, I've found it definitely helps with smoother running of the bike. Um, as I say, you, you could find Booster Plug online. I've got no affiliation with Booster Plug, but I think it works really, really well. The, um, the only thing to finish off with now is to basically say, let's, let's hope we get through this pandemic and we can all get out and ride our bikes again. I know I'm really missing riding this. They're, uh, they're a great bike, amazing engine. If anyone's got any comments, anything they would like to know further details on about the things I've done to the bike, please get in touch below. Um, all I can say is please, if you like what you've seen, please subscribe. And um, hopefully we'll see you all again soon. Okay, bye-bye.